how to become a professional quantity surveyor, what are the skills required, how much QS can earn, and what are the typical working hours. We will learn all here. My name is Sadi Chohan. I am an AEC consultant. I will be your presenter for this amazing series of QS. We will learn all about quantity surveying here. So let's dive in. There are few ways to get into this profession. First is university that usually takes 4 to 5 years of degree program. Second, apprenticeship. You can learn under a company or certified quantity surveying firm. Third, work experience. Get experience toward this role by starting as a surveying technician or surveying assistant and study part time to eventually become a quantity surveyor. Which use communities are available all over the world? There are many quantity surveying communities who promote the highest professional qualification and certification in architecture, engineering, and construction domain. Some of the names are mentioned below like RICS, the Royal Institution of Chartered Quantity Surveyors, and there are many else like Australian, Canadian, Chinese, Indian, Uganda, and many more. Fortunately, I have been an honorary technical trainer for few of these major communities lately. Let's talk about required knowledge and skill of quantity surveyor. First is mathematics and construction engineering skill, like knowledge in uh, algebra, geometry and calculus, know-how of engineering application in principle and techniques, knowledge of assigning techniques, tools, plan, drawing and model, knowledge of construction process such as foundation, frame, roof, block works, mechanical, electrical, plumbing and finishing etc. Second is accounting or economic skills like knowledge of accounting, financial market, banking and cost analysis, pricing tender, unit rate, cash flow and budget fluctuation, cost estimate for material, labor and equipment etc. Third is project management skill like strategic planning, risk management, value engineering, cost management. Fourth is legal series, knowledge of construction law, contract law such as GCT, building codes, government building regulation, professional institutes such as SMM, NRM, etc. Fifth is business administration like resource allocation, production method, coordination and office management, client need assessment, quality standard and evaluation, etc. Six, positive interpersonal skill, like being an honest and ethical, being a team player, reliable and responsible, having a negotiation skills, analytics thinking, and most important, patience and tolerance. Seven, and important, computer skills, like knowledge of basic and advanced software, uh, able to use advanced software like AutoCAD, PlanSwift, Cortex, and Microsoft Excel, etc and having a good typing and multimedia skills for reporting and presentation skills. How much QS earns or can earn in this profession? There are so many blogs on the Google search engine showing the figures but to be honest I don't agree with these figures because that can really vary and strongly depends on your country, region, qualifications, skills and experience, type of employer even though. Either you work for public or private sector, or you're working in oil, gas, aviation, or manufacturing industry. And obtaining a chartered status increases both job and salary prospects. And to be honest, QS is one of the jobs that can earn more by getting some freelance projects, some part-time projects, and it's easy to get either a reference by the client, or there are multiple websites you can easily find it on a Google like Fiverr, Upwork and Freelancing. What are the working hours of a QS? Working hours are typically from 40 to 48 hours per week but to be honest it varies. Where do you work and for whom? If it's government department typically they have uh, standard working hours but majority of QS works for contractor or subcontractor and here 
working hour may be longer and you may have to do part shift work. Occasionally, weekend work may be required. Classification of quantity surveyor. In my opinion, there are two major classifications and the first one is employer based. Client's QS who looks after the sole interest of the client throughout the project. Consultant's QS who ensures the balance between contractors and client's QS. Contractor's QS who looks after the sole interest of contractor throughout the project. Subcontractor's QS who generate and estimates for the subcontractor job. Suppliers QS who cause specific quantities for material, labor or machinery to be supplied and local authority and government agencies etc. Second is specialization based QS. That architect and civil building structural part of all kinds of projects like commercial, residential, educational and hospital etc. MEP QS like mechanical, electrical, plumbing services. QS for fit out interior, exterior, finishing and decoration etc. QS for landscaping like external environment, garden, park, pool etc. QS for infrastructure like road, bridges, railway and dam etc. And there are more on the senior level who took lead and supervise other QS, estimation, tender and technical team like QS commercial manager, QS asset economist, QS contract manager, QS procurement manager, etc. etc. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. To learn this whole QS course, please follow the series of video Learn to Make a Difference.